And now, this. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 John Oliver running gags. Praise be to all of you watching us tonight or joining us online at www.ourladyofperpetualexemption.com. For this list, we'll be looking at the best running jokes on the popular and informative comedy news show. What's your favorite John Oliver gag? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Danbury, Connecticut one of the best things about John Oliver is how far he'll go for a joke, no matter how weird it is. In one episode, Oliver singled out the city of Danbury, Connecticut in a humorous but harsh manner. Danbury, Connecticut can eat my whole ass. The city's mayor, Mark Boughton, later suggested that the city's sewage plant should be named in Oliver's dishonor. Not one to squander a chance for publicity, Oliver offered sizable donations to local charities on the condition that the mayor follow up on his word. I will donate $55,000 to charities in your area. This led to a ribbon cutting ceremony for the John Oliver Memorial Sewer Plant. Seeing the comedian himself there for the official opening show how far he'd go for a great punchline. Number 9. How is this still a thing? And now, Last Week Tonight asks, how is this still a thing? Some things are just so taken for granted that we might not stop to think how weird they really are. This Last Week Tonight segment breaks down traditions like Columbus Day and Daylight Savings Time and how they arguably do more harm than good. Daylight Saving Time. How is this still a thing? Like the show itself, this segment manages to be both humorous and informative by condensing a complex topic to a few minutes. It also helps us to understand where some of these problematic traditions started and how we can move past them. We're glad that how is this still a thing is still a thing. All of which is enough to make you wonder, Columbus Day, how is this still a thing? Number 8. Business Daddy In 2016, telecommunications giant AT&T purchased Warner Media, then known as Time Warner, and HBO along with it. Oliver immediately showed the utmost respect to his new parent company by creating an entirely new gag. Oh, you like that business daddy? Johnny's acting up again. Johnny's acting up. This $85 billion acquisition proved priceless for Oliver in terms of comedic potential. Referring to AT&T as business daddy, Oliver has continually found time to rib the company for its less than reliable service. And it is worth noting, AT&T is still technically our business daddy, making OAN our business step-sibling and not in a hot way. He doesn't just stop at dropped calls or slow internet though. Oliver has also called out AT&T for actions he sees as immoral. Even if the higher-ups don't take his critiques to heart, it's good to see someone with such a large platform calling out a big company. But unfortunately, Rod had AT&T, so the phone call never went through. I got you! I got you, business daddy! I got you so good! Number 7. Our Lady of Perpetual Exemption A notable episode saw Oliver take a closer look at how certain televangelists acquired their sizable fortunes. He pointed out that they reaped huge profits without taxation because they were part of religious organizations. Because if you're registered as a religious nonprofit or especially a church, you are given broad exemptions over taxation and regulation. To further prove his point, Oliver started his own church and pointedly named it Our Lady of Perpetual Exemption. We filed paperwork last week establishing a church called Our Lady of Perpetual Exemption. And it was disturbingly easy. But this wasn't the turning point where the host fully converted from a comedian to a full-time holy man. Instead, Oliver harnessed the power of the church for several great bits, and any donations that the church received were handed out to Doctors Without Borders. It's fantastic to see Oliver use an exemption to do some real good in the world. Number 6. Summoning George Clooney John Oliver has a number of famous friends, and fortunately for us, he called upon them to pull off some excellent comedic material. In one running gag, Oliver's able to snap his fingers and summon George Clooney. The only person I can summon with a snap of my fingers is George Clooney. Watch. There he is. The famous actor is quick to scold Oliver for using this apparent power irresponsibly. When Oliver snaps his fingers without thinking on future occasions, Clooney only grows more perturbed. 
Oh, no, I'm sorry, George. I did it again. I'm sorry. How hard is it not to snap your fingers? But despite his annoyance, the movie star eventually shows a softer side and briefly gives Oliver the power to reach more celebrities with a snap. We hope the host continues to snap to bring more surprising famous faces to the show. Actually sounds really fun, George. Are you heading out with your kids? No. <laughs> oh. Number five, Lost Graphics. Since the set is fairly straightforward, Oliver often uses funny graphics throughout the show to emphasize his points. His team is great at mocking up ridiculous images that are funny on their own, but also relate to a wider issue in their own absurd way. I genuinely have absolutely no memory of what that joke was. <laughs> Deep down, it probably never made any sense. Noteworthy graphics that didn't make the cut get a chance to shine in a recurring web-only segment. The best thing about them is that they're presented out of context. Images like Kid Rock driving a monster truck into a Dairy Queen and a chicken with a Rachel haircut known as Hennifer Aniston are just stunning. We had to cut this image of a chicken with a haircut from the 90s whose name obviously is Hennifer Aniston. We personally can't think of a better use of a graphic design degree. We also never got to, uh, the chance to show you this picture of a journalist squirrel. Uh, his name is obviously Edward R. Burrow because he digs deep whether he's investigating a story or burying a little nut with his tiny small hands. Number four, a country you think about so little. When Oliver brings up countries or regions that most of his viewers likely ignore completely, he'll point out their ignorance by springing those seven words on them. He'll then reveal that the graphic he's used for the country is actually a different one. A country that you think about so little that you didn't even notice that that's not Uruguay, this is Uruguay. It's actually astounding how many times Oliver has managed to fool us with this gag. Every time he hits us with this simple setup, we're reminded about our lack of geographic knowledge. Actually, actually, that's still not Bolivia, this is Bolivia. While this segment hasn't made us any more eager to study a globe, it has definitely made us laugh. You didn't even realize that not only is that not Azerbaijan, it's not even a landmass, it's the Caspian Sea. This is Azerbaijan. Number three, Adam Driver Obsession. There are many reasons we love Adam Driver. He's an incredible actor, very humble, and yeah, we have to admit he's pretty handsome. But John Oliver really, really focuses on this performer's looks. Collapse on my chest, you impenetrable barrier. On numerous occasions, the host has shoehorned in references to Driver's attractiveness. Oliver will often comment on the actor's physique and make explicit requests. Pull my heart out through my ear, you meaty oak tree. Impale my brain, you unacceptable monstrosity. His thirsting didn't go unnoticed by Driver. Eventually, the actor made a cameo and confronted Oliver about his creepy comments. He then delivered his own startlingly accurate description of the host. According to Oliver, this started off as an intended one-time joke that kept going. We're glad it built up to such an electrifying and hilarious confrontation. Look around you, you underbaked gingerbread boy. Oh God, that feels good. Number two, Janice in accounting. You know that one coworker who you can't stand, whose every action validates why you dislike them? If so, you'll relate to Oliver's complaints about Janice in accounting. This bit sees the host express a topic off the laundry list of petty grievances he has against his terrible coworker. Janice in accounting don't give a f <laughs> Janice's many sins include stealing food from the break room, giving bad secret Santa gifts, and claiming island territories for herself. Janice in accounting don't give a f <laughs> This is a great bit due to how relatable it is to anyone who's ever had annoying coworkers. And if you don't see what the big deal with some of these actions are, then you might be the office Janice yourself. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Wax presidents. What better way to honor these important leaders? I knew we could count on you, but I'm afraid this isn't a one-man job. Cool. A simple and perfect way to throw shade. Cool. <laughs> cool. Go get those geckos. Oliver became obsessed with these now dearly departed space geckos. Mr. Putin, go get those geckos! Blockbuster and Russell Crowe's jockstrap. Are you not entertained as we are by this segment series? $7,000! That is a big price to pay just to find out what Russell Crowe's balls smelled like in 2005. We got him. Despite Oliver's excitement, they never actually got him. And you know what that means. 
We got it! We got it! We got it! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Weird Mascots It sometimes seems like John Oliver's goal with Last Week Tonight is not to spread awareness about important issues. Instead, he's just doing the show so he can put the strangest mascots in existence on TV. Here comes the monkey. You're gonna be looking forward to that operation. Oliver's made time to highlight original and wacky creature creations. Among this motley crew are Hoots the NSA Owl and Jeff the Diseased Lung in a cowboy hat. It's Jeff the Diseased Lung! He also spent airtime focusing on Chiton, an otter that represents the town of Susaki, Japan. You might not see any of Oliver's mascots at your local sporting events anytime soon. Fortunately, they're all around to help make Last Week Tonight a consistently memorable viewing experience. Look, look, here's your national animal. I even pretend it exists. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.